So in today's video, it's about these three new plugins by Sonable. They just came out today. Pure Verb, Pure Comp, Pure Limit. And they are kind of small little sisters of the bigger plugins called uh, Smart Reverb, Smart Compressor and Smart Limiter. And they have less controls. So when you look here, maybe at Smart uh, Compressor, Right. This is the mini version and that's the bigger version. Um, there are a lot of controls missing on the smart one, um, which in my opinion is actually not a bad thing because most of the times if you're a creative person, you want to just dial in roughly a few parameters and call it a day. And here you, yeah, you fear basically the, um, that you are going in too deep, that you tweak too much, and then at the end you are unhappy with your decisions, and then you go back and tweak again, and then you're thinking about all the possibilities you are missing out, and you start to tweak another time, right? So this is more for like mastering engineers, and this is more like aimed at creative uh, people that just want to dial in a few parameters and yeah, want to move on. So um, there are links in the description to this um, to these um, trial versions here. You can try it out for yourself before you buy it. I think you get all three for 49 bucks at the moment, intro sale. And um, yeah, maybe it's for you. So I want to give you a rough idea how they work. Maybe let's remove here the smart comp. In the background, I have a track and I removed all my usual mastering uh, tools here, crossover, DP meter, DSEQ3, and then the elevate here by newfangled audio, and replace it with the pure comp and pure reverb and pure limit here. And you can see they all need playback before they can act or be before they reveal all their parameters you can you can change. So we start here with the verb because the verb is in a mixing uh, in a mixing um, in a mixing uh, workflow, it's more like aiming at positioning your sounds in a spatial environment. So you can put tracks in the foreground or in the background by choosing how much re reverb you are uh, adding to that track. So here we analyze the input signal. So just let this run in the background and I hit record here. Then you can change here the, the mix. The size. I think I think your synthetic is uh, changing is changing how much pitch wobble you have. At least that's that's how it looks and how it sounds. So if you pull this down, yeah, it sounds more chaotic and random. And at 100 here, it sounds more ordered in my ears. It's not so random. So I think it's about the uh, uh, delay time modulation, something about that. And this reverb, in my opinion, doesn't sound um, yeah, let's say it, it sounds good, but it's not aiming at having adding something special to your lead sounds or pad sounds where you, you know, want to put on a, a lush reverb and then it sounds beautiful and wide and spacey. And um, this is more aiming at, um, at a tool or it's more like a tool that you can use to put sound in the background or more like in the foreground. It, it has more like a utility character, if you know what I mean. So um, if you're searching for a nice lush reverb you can use for ambient, then that's probably not what you're gonna search for. It's more like, it's like a mixing tool. Um, so yeah, pull this here a bit down to maybe 50. Um, there are also different modes here, normal mode, infinite mode. You have an infinite reverb there. Reverse. Bounce, which is back and forth. So it plays the audio material back and forth. At least uh, 
the feedback buffer. Yeah, normal is best. Also a mix here of maybe 10, 20. I just want to put a small reverb on there to get to get the sense of spacey environment. Okay, so next up here is the compressor, so we can also analyze this here. Um, I'm also using here a universal uh, profile. You can change different profiles. Um, I don't know exactly what they change. Um, I guess it's more about you skipping through the, the profiles here and using something that you like. Um, I would advise maybe on the master bus to go for universal because it's not vocals, not drums, not snare, not guitar, not keys and not speech. So universal, right? The same here on the pure comp, you have different profiles here. It's drum space, um, keys, mix, soft, moderate, hard. I think that's probably yeah, something for the mastering bus, also universal. So let's stick with universal first and analyze the material. So here you can see the gain reduction here on the right, the small red indicator. Shows you how much gain reduction there is. You can increase that. Also compensates for the output output loudness here with the auto gain. You can disable this and can choose a manually uh, output gain here. But auto gain is fine. But this is too much gain reduction. But just for the sake of this uh, video. So basically dirty adds a lot of overtones, it sounds more like there's a saturation at the end. Um, at least it, it introduces a lot of overtones. And I'm going here for a mix, so which is between dirty and clean. And maybe compression, not that much. And then we have clarity here, which is more like a tonal balancer or spectral balancing um, tool. So if you have this at 100, 100 it's um, I think the maybe the curve, the, the base curve of this is probably equally loudness or maybe pink noise. So it tries to EQ your material, remove some resonances, maybe some imbalances there. Not much, even if you have this at 100, it doesn't do that much, in my opinion. So you can uh, happily tweak this around here. So, so just so you, that you know, there's also an EQ in here, a spectral EQ or spectral balancer, however you want to call it. Um, then we can also try out your different profiles. Let's do that. So it changes different settings. I also think it changes the attack and release times of the compressor because you can't change this manually here in the pure comp. In the smart compressor, you can change it here, you can't. Um, but the compressor without changing attack and release times doesn't make any sense in my opinion. So it needs to do that in the background somehow. Um, the biggest drawback is that you can't change it man manually. So you can change it or tweak it anywhere you like it. Um, it's more like an automatic process. So, so you have to trust the analyzer and the profiles here for that. Or we go for universal here. Yeah, that's fine. And then we have here pure limit. So we have to analyze again here yeah, what comes out of the compressor. I've 
also different styles. Art. That's what I like. And classic, acoustic, funk, electronic. There's also no threshold here. You can change this here on the settings page. Uh, limit of threshold, minus one dB. That's advised to have this on the master just because of um, two peaks and so on. So minus one dB here, it's just okay. You have a lot of things here you can change also here on the compressor. For instance, here I have enable auto gain after learning. I have, I have this enabled here. Um, pure verb is also, oh, there's nothing here. Use OpenGL, yeah, that's it. I have no idea really what, what inflate does here. Um, but I think the tooltip says here, inflate your signal to increase the apparent loudness and bass level of your track without increasing peak levels. So I think it messes around with the tonal balance a bit, um, pushes up the bass and so on. At least it sounds this way. The bass comes out a bit more. You can see we don't have here that much peak, peak uh, reduction. We also don't need to. And it looks like it's only the snare um, triggering here the limit or that hard. So we can probably also go here to the drums and tone down the... Yeah, that's this. This one here. See? So now the snare is not triggering the limiter in the end that much anymore. But that's some something I do sometimes. Look at the, the master, right? And see what's triggering the limiter that hard. Maybe it's just one one sound, one special sound, here it's the snare. So I pull this down by 1 dB and then, you know, the limiter doesn't work that hard anymore. Um, yeah. It's maybe, it's maybe not the best workflow, but sometimes that's what I do. Let's use the dB meter here. So we have your short term loudness max minus 7.5, which is pretty loud. We go to 1 dB. Universal. Yeah, I really don't know what exactly the profiles are changing if they just change, if this, this is just a preset, so it's a bit mysterious or kind of a black box thing, uh, what they change in the background. Maybe they also change attack and release times. I have no idea. Um, I can only judge it by what I'm hearing. Um, so yeah, these are basically new on the market as of today. I want to make a video about this because I I know Sonable for years now. I use some of their bigger plugins, and I think it's actually nice to have some yeah some smaller plugins um, of these bigger things here on the market. Um, like I said, for a creative person, it's sometimes easier to just tweak some of these 
a um, few parameters here and call it day and move on with your track. Um, I probably use these here even more than the bigger ones um, because compressor is some, sometimes something I don't like to tweak. Um, and sometimes I just need something to glue something together on a bus. So I put use probably use the comp pure comp here and put it on a drum bus and um, tweak these settings and call it a day. So yeah, that's that's it basically for this video. I want to show you these. Um, as I said, link is in the description. Maybe give it a try with the trial versions and um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye.